O sırada şey izleyelim. Abi speedrun kanalı. Ee, speedrunlarla ilgili böyle özet falan anlatıyor. Acayip güzel. Bayıldım kanala. Dur alt yazılar. Otomatik çevir. Türkçe. Hız koşusu. As this hobby has gained traction over the past decade, more people have scene, contributing to make the runs themselves faster via increasing the quality of play, as well as discoveries of tricks, skips, and glitches galore. However, these new developments often result in the runs themselves becoming much harder to improve, with new world record speedrunnings beginning to implement some of the most difficult, absurd, and even seemingly impossible tricks. These tricks and glitches range from incredibly precise positioning to successfully execute the trick, to astonishing sequence of frame-perfect inputs, pushing the limits of what is humanly possible, all while trying to go fast. In this video, I will be going over a handful of the most recent examples of the most difficult tricks used in speedrunning today. And who knows, maybe by the end of it, you'll feel a little bit inspired. Or maybe you'll be too afraid to even pick up a controller to try any of these tricks. Well then, let's begin. Starting off with the original Super Mario Bros, where thanks to this game's frame rule system, time and levels can only be saved or lost within intervals of 21 frames in a 60 FPS game, and over the course of several decades, Super Mario Bros speedrunners have been able to match tool-assisted speedrun frame rules in several levels, even within full game runs, especially the early levels. But one level in particular became a bottleneck, where many world record attempts died. Beating yeah, World 4-2 as fast as possible is one of the hardest and strictest segments in speedrunning history. In order to compete for the world Altes record, öldü. which is usually a frame rule slower than the task here, Players must be able to clip into a brick wall in order to displace Mario's horizontal position about 20 pixels to the right. Hit the beanstalk block and enter this pipe at the correct time in order to wrong warp to the warp zone to get to world 8. Skipping the long beanstalk climbing animation in the process. All gas, no breaks. In Super Mario Bros. any percent, Bunu nasıl this is where the majority of will likely die. Not even 2 minutes into a speedrun barely under 5 minutes. But wait! It can get even harder. You could try to match the task frame rule by going for Lightning 4-2. This is an even more ludicrous than the already difficult Fast 4-2, utilizing a single quick bump to displace Mario 12 pixels to the right, multiple frame-perfect inputs on the D-pad, including a pipe jump to successfully perform the wrong warp. Former world record holder Nifsky grinded for this frame rule on and off for about half a year, before becoming the first human to nail Lightning 4-2 on January 30th, 2021. An absolutely incredible feat today, and perhaps the standard for world records tomorrow. specifically on the level depot ya. on the agent difficulty, Bayağı bildim botun yaptığı şey yapmak zorundasın ki. Previously believed to be tasks only. In this level on the agent difficulty, the only objective is to navigate to and board Trevelyan's train. In a normal playthrough, you can reach this train by entering this building and traveling through the second floor to open this roller gate before boarding the train. For about a couple decades, speedrunners took this basic route in order to finish the level as quickly as possible. There is a roller gate on the side of the warehouse that would be a more direct path to the train, but alas, it cannot be opened. However, in 2006, the former world champion, Wouter Janssen, discovered that while using the turbo mode cheat, that it was possible to clip through this locked gate via a warp. Warps are a common Hadi technique bakalım, used in içinden... GoldenEye speedrunning in order to clip through slowly moving doors or up ladders by generating enough lag by switching weapons or shooting. Warps generally weren't that difficult to perform, Harada, but this nasıl bulabilirsin ya? And without the turbo cheat, It was very inconsistent and appeared to be tasks only. Several years after Wouter posted about this discovery, runners would sometimes attempt it during bad runs of the level just for the hell of it, but none of them could get it to work. That is, until April 26, 2015, when the speedrunner Scorpion went for it. And this happened.
Yani adam tak diye duvarın içinden geçti ya. Had done it. He had become the first human to pull off the warp without sheets. That same day, the world record was lowered from 25 seconds to 24 and then to 23 the next day, which is still the record to this day, tied by 18 people. Oha. The depot gate warp is an incredibly precise trick that Oha, requires a good angle and good timing immediately after performing a somewhat accurate gunshot. Oha, kadar optimize etmişler ki. The train in order to get 23 seconds. Runners have only been able to successfully pull off this warp once they put in enough time in the level, and even then, they can go several hours getting it once. Bunun aynısını hitmende de yapıyorlar. Shortcut within another N64 classic. In Mario Kart 64, several of the game's tracks have shortcuts which use glitches in order to complete the laps much faster than what's intended. Oh. The most infamous example Baş... is the skip known as the weather... Ne yaptığını gördünüz mü? Tura başlıyor, map'in sonuna gidiyor, tekrar bitiriyor. Tanko on Choco Mountain. Discovered by the Tasser Weatherton in 2014, the glitchy shortcut involves hopping up a wall a bit past the finish line using the boost of a mushroom and a precise oh, hop clip through a precise part of the wall briefly before tumbling back down. This tiny clip will trick the game into thinking the player has hit a checkpoint later along the track and the lap will count yeah, but the the alev şu anda. Getting the correct boost on console proved to be quite difficult and many debated whether it could even be done by a human. However, on August 1st, 2014, the top runner, Beck Abney, would become the first human to pull off the weather tanko, finishing a lap in under 6 seconds. After this, many people speculated whether it was possible to hit three weather tankos in a row in a single time trial. The odds of hitting the weather tanko were about 1 in 40. Multiply that three times, and the odds fall to about 1 in 64,000. This is due to not only the precision needed to clip into the wall, but you also had hope that the game didn't troll you with the incorrect frame when you hop up a wall, causing you to tumble down instead. Come 2017, an Abney would decide to grind for hitting three weather tankos in a row. It ben şanslı inanmam. failed attempts. Alper şanslı 14 milyar bir şey. Canım sizin en iyi haberim. Size hoş geldin. Row, finishing the time trial in just over 16 seconds. To this day, only four people have successfully pulled out three kişi. out of three in a single time trial. But that is still more people who have pulled that off than the number of people who have pulled off this next shortcut even once. Along with its older brother, Mario Kart Wii is home to several glitchy skips known as Ultra Shortcuts. Oh, Some the like the Double Volcano and Coconut Mall Ultras are <laughs> relatively easy. Zen. Others are quite difficult, and then there's Rainbow Road. On March 4, 2016, Tasser Esteloy62 discovered an Ultra Shortcut on Rainbow Road, and it was quite the doozy. To pull off an Ultra Shortcut, oh, you need to hop from a region oh. where there's a key checkpoint box to a region box not adjacent to the key checkpoint area. In this case, the player must jump from the finish line's key checkpoint Bunu, box hayır, in order to prevent geçtim, the key checkpoint just before the finish line from unloading. On Rainbow Road, this involves clipping into the fence using a boost pad and a well-timed hop, after which a precise technique known as a spin drift must be executed in order to get the correct angle before okay, boosting off of a hop and all three mushrooms. If done correctly, the player will land just Peki, before the key checkpoint and the lap will count. This was quite intimidating to say the least, and despite a few people attempting the ultra throughout the years, no one could quite land it for nearly five. However, on January 13th, 2021, speedrunner Arthur would become the first human to successfully nail the Rainbow Road Ultra shortcut in time trials, setting not only a new individual lap record, but also a new three lap world record as well. Sen... E tabi canım bir tane turda zaten turu bir dakikadan 50 saniye çekince diğer iki turu normal yapmıştır. Dünya rekorunu almıştır iyi bir şekilde. Then, no one has nailed the ultra shortcut nor beaten Arthur's times yet and it's unlikely that anyone will for a very long time. Bir kişi yapmış bir tur yapabilmiş. Just a few weeks earlier prominent tasser Malio had discovered a method to perform the ultra shortcut using just one mushroom, allowing for it to be nailed three times within a single race. Unlike the weather tango, however, the inputs required are far too precise for a human to nail the trick without using all three shrooms. 
So sadly, a 3 out of 3 will remain tasks only for the foreseeable future. But what if you were to try to attempt a trick with similar strictness in regards to precision in a full game speedrun? Up Abi until this point, the tricks I've mentioned are for very alamıyorum. short speedruns where you can just try again right away. But what if you had to perform a clip so precise, where your position had to be perfect, down to the millionths of a unit, and it's 20 minutes deep in an hour-long speedrun? <laughs> Welcome to Banjo-Kazooie Any% percent. In this speedrun, you need to collect 810 notes in order to open up the final door to the final boss fight with Gruntilda. Oh yeah, in like, 6 jiggies. In a normal playthrough, you need to collect a vast majority of the game's main collectible, jiggies, in order to unlock all 9 levels, where in each level there contains 100 notes which are required to open up several note doors along your journey, including the final one that requires hmm. 810 evet. notes. The note door cannot be skipped. If you have several out-of-bounds glitches, Banjo and Kazooie can enter all but two levels without any jiggies. The most difficult clip, however, is early Mad Monster Mansion. In early 2020, a new type of clip was discovered called a float clip, where at extremely precise locations, it is possible to clip through floors and enter loading zones. Following this discovery, Glitch Hunter the 8-Bit Beast wrote a program in order to find the precise position and angle required to clip through the Mad Monster Mansion, one of the only levels that couldn't be accessed early through glitches up until that point. Come June 27th, 8-Bit was post a viable setup that worked on console. The Tasser Ring Rush posted a setup that was a minute faster than the previous one. When şey yapacağım. Oyunsuz kaldığımızda Toast'tan bir tane içeriği çalacağım. Toast şey yaptı bir ara. Youtube içeriği olarak da kullandı. Ben bu açısı da yarar. <gülüyor> ee, i̇ki gününü bir oyuna arıyor, oy ayırıyor. Speedrun yapıyor oyunu. Speedrun yapabilip yapamayacağını şey yapıyor. Öğreniyor. Oyunumuz ne olacak? Değişiyor paso. İki günde belli bir seviyeye kadar inebiliyor musun? Diye. Herhangi bir oyun. Zaten içerik o yüzden. İki günde bir yani değiştiriyor paso. Değiştiriyor <gülüyor> When it comes to other frame perfect techniques, however, sometimes there's no room for a breather. In Super Mario Odyssey's Minimum Capture Speedrun, players Super attempt to speedrun the game while only ama. capturing entities with Cappy a total of three times. The run features several frame perfect out of bounds clips, frame perfect Cappy teleportation, all while playing with two controllers simultaneously. And yet, ben as these crazy tricks are implemented and the capture count lowered, one thing remained the same for the past two years. The nut jump is easily the hardest trick in the run. Ben bunu izledim, bu çok zor. Nut jump. Exclusive version 1.0 of Mario Odyssey. This trick allows Mario to gain infinite height using a wet nut. When this giant nut is wet, it gains the strange property of being able to repeatedly be caught mid-air. In minimum capture speedruns, this is used to skip the final pylon capture just before the Mecha Brutal fight in Bowser's Kingdom. However, in order to catch the nut again after throwing it, you must input a frame perfect dive, catch it, throw, dive frame perfectly, rinse and repeat for several dozen times until you reach the top. This takes quite a lot of practice and is not only Ya şöyle söyleyeyim. Saniyenin 60'ta biri hızında input kuyu girmen gerekiyor ve bunu her attığında iki kere girmen lazım. Saniyenin 60'ta biri a huge roadblock for newbies to the category, but also an infuriating run killer for veteran runners. The nut jump was first implemented in late 2018 when the speedrunner Grady completed the first 13 captures run using this trick, and the speedrun hasn't been the same ever since. With ideal execution though, the nut jump takes under a minute, and you're also just going up in a straight line, worrying only about hitting a nice rhythm. Several frame perfect inputs, yes. But at least it's not over 200 frame perfect inputs over the course of several minutes, 
like in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. If you want to have a chance at getting a competitive time in speedrunning Wind Waker and not automatically be 10 minutes slower than the very best, you'll need to perform a manual super swim at the very start of the run. Throughout the speedrun, super swimming is a common glitch used to travel across the Great Sea at lightning speeds. Using the assistance of glitches such as Wind Waker storage in the original GameCube version, or item sliding with the grappling hook in the HD remake. At the start of the game in Outset Island, however, you'll have none of those items, meaning that in order to super swim, you'll need to frame perfectly turn 180 degrees every frame while swimming in order to build up enough speed. When swimming in the opposite direction on the first frame, Link gains 3 units of speed. If he continues in that direction for another frame, he loses 3 frames of speed, resulting in a net zero speed gain. In November 2017, Wind Waker speedrunners began experimenting with manual super swimming, Consider using frame-perfect pausing and buffering opposite inputs on the control stick. Once Link reached 550 units of speed, the camera would lock in place to where oh, this no, on the control stick would charge up speed. Uh, ke, video in. Once runners got good at practicing this soon became a viable trick for both Wind Waker HD and SD speedrunning, although it proved to be quite the challenge. Not only would you need to do hundreds of frame perfect pause uh, okay. but you would also need to precisely ama. refill Link's air meter along the coast. O kod nereye giriyor? Satın almada en son ekranda sağ tarafta. speed you built up. And as if that didn't sound wild enough, things got crazier in the GameCube version in 2020 when speedrunners such as Link 7 and Demon began doing unbuffered manual super swimming. O Mabrin kayırıyor olsun. Flicking the stick up and down at a rate close to 20 times per second. Abi kaç soluyor mu? Oluyor. As you can imagine, this method is very physically demanding. But charging up the super swim unbuffered saved about 2 minutes over unbuffered. And thus, the top runners began to partially implement it in the speedruns before eventually doing the trick in <gülüyor> unbuffered. It's one of the most physically demanding tricks in all of speedrunning. But evidence shows that it is good for building up arm muscle. As strenuous as manual swimming <gülüyor> is, at least it's relatively mindless exercise. At least compared to writing literal code with Koopa shells, blocks, Yoshi. Ah, ben bunu biliyorum. Bunu şey bulmuştu. Ee, Minecraft'ta rest ondan bir şeyler yapan herif. Fireballs. Oh my. Super Mario World's credit warp is honestly a technical marvel within speedrunning. Bu müthiş bir şey. It allows Mario to write and execute arbitrary code within the game as a means of warping from one of the first levels in the game to the end credit. Abi oyun şöyle kırılıyor. Oyundaki belli itemları belli bir sırayla alırsan oyunundaki oyunun memorisini bitiriyorsun. Memorisi bittiği için oyun kendini sıfırlayıp buffer overflow oluyor. Sıfıra geri dönüyor. Sıfıra geri döndüğü için de oyun bitmiş sayıyor. This is accomplished using an SNES multi-tap, with several controllers attached with specific inputs taped down, as well as position-perfect Koopa Troopa stomps, shell positioning, throws, Yoshi block duplication, and near-frame-perfect fireball spitting. The first time a human successfully pulled off this credit warp on console was on January 21st, yapmış, when popular Minecraft YouTuber and Super Mario World enthusiast Seth Bling performed it, beating Super Mario World in just under 6 minutes. Over the years, the fastest Bak, setup kırıldı. has changed, and performing credits warp has become less about taking the time to set up the necessary components to a near incomprehensible sequence of 41 seconds of gameplay, consisting of several frame perfect and position perfect inputs which make Manyak the warp possible. <coughs> As speedruns of the category have gotten faster, the less consistent successful runs were. But in spite of this run's absurd difficulty, it's less than a Bu minute, alma. meaning that despite daha the impeccable biraz bekle, daha fazla indirme girer uzun vadede. You can always try again right away. Not to mention, it's performed in a simple two-dimensional plane. But what if you were to perform something similar to this, but it was in the third dimension, where precise angles and coordinates could make or break the run? Ever since the fall of 2019, when glitches and stuff discovered stale reference manipulation, or SRM for short, Speedruns of the N64 Zelda games haven't been the same since. This is by far the most powerful glitch in both Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And is incredibly complex, enough to warn its own dedicated video on this channel in the near future. But to quickly summarize SRM, it allows you to manipulate the game's memory by performing it. But in the end, Bu kupon bir ay daha çalışıyor. Şubat'ın sonuna kadar çalışıyor. Dying Light'ı almak istiyorsanız bekleyin. 
Dying Light güzel çıkarsa zaten dördünde alabiliyorsunuz. Dying Light güzel çıkarsa ona harcayın kuponu. 300 TL'den 130 TL inerseniz mis gibi yani. 170 TL alıyorsunuz. Forming specific actions before unloading a held object through the loading plane. This allows the reference of the unloaded object to become stale and be filled in with another reference depending on position and angle. This is used in various speedruns to obtain several items much earlier than intended, as well as obtain glitchy items such as the F boots, which normally aren't obtainable and allow Link to float in the air from a side hop and even wrong warp to different Adam, locations geçti, the game, and şu anda. even execute arbitrary code similar to Mario World. Various uses of SRM are used in several of the game's categories. The most infamous and volatile uses of SRM are performed in Ocarina of Time's 100% category, an incredibly brutal gauntlet filled with several difficult wrong warps, which are both position and angle perfect, and have shaved off half an hour out of a three and a half hour run. Damn. Setups of these warps exist and are performed in full game runs, but the precision required it to successfully nail these wrong warps is extreme, where it's a Abi, slightest position error yani. coming into a soft lock or the game crashing. This makes the speed run incredibly unstable, meaning that until you reach the final Ganon fight, the run is always at risk of dying due to a crash or a incredibly tight setups and warps, as it's possible to learn and gain some level of consistency. Other speedrunners aren't so lucky, as is the case with Super Mario 64 120 star. In the 120 star speedrun, runners collect the star atop the house in Rainbow Benim Ride alongside the 64 kolum nerede lan acaba? However, they must çok ride a magic carpet in order to reach the top of the house for nearly a minute. This is obviously slower than not using the carpet, but is consistent and safe. To reach the top of the house without the carpet is downright preposterous. To do so, you must pick up the bob bomb atop the ship on the other side of the map, throw it and catch it while it's at its biggest size before exploding to stop the explosion and give Mario lots of backward speed. Mario is then navigated to a place where he can drop the bob bomb in a precise manner to prevent it from ever exploding. Re-grab it while Mario is sliding off of a ledge to carry the bob bomb without using oh, his hands, no, no, so he no, no, the majority of his move set once more. While this is happening, he is continuously being pushed back. And with careful navigation, he can travel to a warp location which teleports him to the house's balcony. From there, Mario conserves the speed and can perform a complex series of glitchy wall kicks along a house in order to reach the star without the carpet. This strat was first implemented in a TAS in 2013, saving over a minute. Several years later in 2019, top runners such as Cheese were able to perform the trick using save states, but so far, only one person, Zaya, has successfully managed to perform carpetless on console without save states. This trick will likely be used in individual star speed runs, but will be considered way too difficult to go for in full game runs. Especially since there's several places where you can mess up, and it's during the final five minutes of the run too, so the risk heavily Oha. outweighs the reward. O kadar run yapıyorsun, son video, I've gone bu. over some pretty insane tricks, so I've saved Çünkü... the longest, most tedious, and mind yani o, kur, o, beş, o kurtulabiliyorsa orada iki dakika, o iki dakika zaten. O millet bir saniye için. In the Breath of the Wild speedrunning community, Glitch Hunter Legend of Link discovered a fascinating new glitch known as New Game Plus. This trick allows the Great Plateau tutorial to be skipped from a fresh save file, as well as allowing for several duplicated items, as well as the Bow of Light outside of the final boss fight with infinite ammo and godlike power. For long runs such as the infamous 100% speed run, it easily saves over a couple of hours. The catch, however, is that the setup takes well over an hour, has to be performed before all the speedrun attempts in the categories that allow it, contains several frame-perfect sequences, all while losing the ability to save the game. And if you die during the setup, you have to start it all over again. Bu nasıl bir kanser? Abi anlamadıysanız... Yani yeni bir oyun başladığınızda itemlarla başlamayı sağlıyor bu glitch. Ama glitch'i yapmak için bir saat boyunca perfect input girip save etmeden bu arada ölürseniz herhangi bir o setup'ta gidiyor bütün şey tekrar yapmanız gerekiyor. Oyuna hani speedrun'a başlamadan önce bir saat boyunca setup yapıp o setup'ı yitirdikten sonra geçmen gerekiyor. Fellow lowest percent contributor and Zelda speedrunner Linka7 has an excellent video covering the setup in great detail. So if you'd like to know more details, I suggest you check that video out. 
This glitch is incredibly absurd, but incredibly useful too. As tedious and off-putting as it may sound to many, there have been some speedrunners who have been creating a new 100% route with New Game Plus, so expect to see a few people running the category with this trick in the near future. Speedrunning tricks can be incredibly hard at times. They can be God damn. <coughs> ne diyeyim? Hangisini deniyoruz? Yok, deli değilim.